Welcome back to Cardiades.org. Today we are going to be looking at the laws of probability. In this video, we're only going to be handling the basics. We're going to be looking at how the laws of probability can be translated into logical laws. And we're going to be looking at this with the idea of thinking towards Bayesian epistemology, the series we're doing. We're going to then use these laws of probability to help us understand Bayesian epistemology and what they're talking about when they're talking about conditional probabilities. So let's take a look. We're talking very specifically in this video about unconditional probability over sentences. We are not talking about what it means for something to have a certain probability. We are not talking about how certain probabilities are generated. We're not talking about the probability of sets or conditional probabilities, though we will get to conditional probabilities in this series. What we are talking about is what we can validly deduce given certain probabilities. We're talking about laws of logic, and just like other laws of logic, like modus ponens, it doesn't tell us if P is true or if P implies Q is true. It doesn't even tell us what those statements mean. What it does tell us is that if given P and given P implies Q, we're allowed by the laws of logic to conclude Q. That is what we're looking at here. What can, if given certain probabilities, we conclude using the laws of probability? So, we're going to introduce a notation that we're going to use throughout this series, which is the probability of a certain statement S is going to be written as P of S. And what that's going to come out as is not a true or false, like most of our logical functions come out as. It's in fact going to come out as a numeric value. There's going to be some parameters on that value, but we'll check that out in the next couple of rules. So the first rule actually deals with that. It's the probability range principle. It says that for all s, the probability of s is between 0 and 1 inclusive. For all statements s, the probability of s is between 0 and 1 inclusive. I'm going to represent that as p ran, or the probability range, whenever it's used in proofs. This should seem fairly intuitive. We understand probability as a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. It wouldn't make sense for us to have a negative probability or a probability greater than 1. That just doesn't mesh with our idea of what probability really is. Next up, we have the probability tautology principle. That is, for all laws of logic, the probability of that law of logic is equal to 1. I'm using L to represent logical truths here. For all logical truths L, the probability of L is equal to 1. I'm going to represent that rule with P tot, or the probability tautology principle. This also seems to make some intuitive sense. If you think that laws of logic are true in all possible worlds, then there is no chance that a law of logic could be false. So the probability of any law of logic has to be 1. And finally, we have the principle of finite additivity. This is a little more complicated. For all statements S and R, if it's not the case that S and R, that implies that the probability of S or R is equal to probability of S plus the probability of R. In other words, for all statements S and R, if it is not the case that S and R, then the probability of S or R is equal to the sum of the probability of S and the probability of R. We're going to represent that with PF add, or the principle of finite additivity. This may not make sense at first glance. So to understand a little bit more, let's think of a specific case. So let's assign two separate coin flips to S and R. This would be the reason that you need it not to be the case that S and R can happen at the same time for this to work. So if we threw out that condition and said, what is the probability of S or R? What's the probability of either the coin on the left flipping heads or the coin on the right flipping heads? If you know about probability, you'll know that that's 3 over 4. Three of the possible outcomes include at least one heads. Only one of the four includes two tails. So 3 out of 4 is that probability. However, the probability of S, this one coin flipping heads, plus the probability of R, this other coin flipping heads, is actually going to be 1. So if it's possible that S and R can both happen, then, in fact, 
this statement is not going to be true. However, if we do have something that has mutually exclusive probabilities, let's take the idea of rolling a dice. If you are saying that S is the dice will come up a 5 and R is the dice will come up a 6, there's no way that the dice can both come up a 5 and a 6 on a single roll. So the probability of either a 5 or a 6 is equal to the probability of it being a 5 plus the probability of it being a 6. Because the probability of rolling either a 5 or a 6 is 1 third, and the probability of rolling a 5 is 1 sixth, and the probability of rolling a 6 is 1 sixth, and 1 sixth plus 1 sixth equals 1 third, this principle seems to work out. Hopefully that made sense. If this principle still isn't very intuitive to you, try it with some actual probabilities and see if they work out. What we're going to do right now is show that with just these three principles, we can actually prove some fundamental truths of probability. This is going to be the sum of the probabilities of S and not S is 1. This seems to make sense. It's kind of a variation on the law of non-contradiction and the law of the excluded middle. Basically, if you have the probability of not S and the probability of S together, either S or not S is a certainty. It's a law of logic. We had that in one of our statements, but we're going to prove it here. So our conclusion we're trying to get to is the probability of not S plus the probability of S is equal to 1. We'll start off with our probability tautology principle, universal instantiation, instantiating the law of the excluded middle in for L, the probability of S or not S is equal to 1. Then we're going to go ahead and take our principle of finite additivity, universally instantiate it once again with the law of the excluded middle to get, it's not the case that S and not S implies that the probability of S or not S is equal to the probability of S plus the probability of not S. Then we'll go ahead and assert it's not the case that S and not S, law of non-contradiction, which allows us to use modus ponens on 3, 4 to get the probability of S or not S is equal to the probability of S plus the probability of not S. Therefore, using the law of identity and 1 and 4, we can replace the probability of S or not S just with 1 to get 1 is equal to the probability of S plus the probability of not S. And we're allowed to, by mixing things around and understanding identity, get the probability of not S plus the probability of S is equal to 1. And thus, we've proven our rule of probability. So, that was the very basics of the laws of probability and the way that they're used in logic. Hopefully that's going to be enough for us to understand the rest of Bayesian epistemology and some of the theorems and ideas that are going to come out of there. Next up, we're going to be talking about Bayes' theorem, followed by the Dutch book arguments, Bayesian confirmation theory, variations of Bayesianism, and finally some objections to Bayes' theorem and Bayesian epistemology. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.